I'll open the select board mean, meeting at uh, 5.06 um, p.m. Uh, Trevor, can you read the... Yep. Welcome to the Town of Deerfield meeting of the Select Board, Board of Health Sewer Commissioners, um, March 13th, 2024 at 5.05 p.m. Um, this meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices in accordance with the Mass General Law Chapter 30A. Anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to the clerk, uh, me, Trevor McDaniel, um, and provide their name and address for the record. Uh, if you'd like to call in, the, the uh, toll-free number is 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. The passcode is 570012. And on the agenda, which is on our calendar, on the Town of Deerfield website, you will see a Zoom link where you can uh, just click on and, and attend by Zoom. Um, meeting attendees should mute their phones, uh, star six for landline, or if you're on Zoom, mute unless you're um, speaking and wait until all others are, are, you know, wait until the person before you is done speaking before you speak and uh, state your name and address or state your name. So call the meeting to order. Um, public comment. Um, do you want to take a public comment? Here yeah, I see that Fran's here, but usually Fran uh, just visits us. Um, and Fran, do you have any public comment? No, I don't at this time. Thanks. Thanks Thank for you, Fran. Okay. Um, and then, so Jessica, um, you um, have an opportunity to tell us about your petition. And um, we'll think about opening up our um, warrant. How's that? Thank you. Um, I didn't know I was going to get to speak very much tonight. Uh, so I'm Jessica Corwin. I'm the chair of the Sunderland School Committee. I'm actually not a Deerfield resident, but I'm working with a group of frontier students, including Deerfield residents and their parents, um, who share an interest in lowering the municipal voting age to 16, which has already been done in Cambridge and Brookline. Um, there are some other municipalities around the state, including Northampton, Boston, Southborough, I believe Lexington is about to do it, who have um, sort of passed it at their municipal level, but requires an action of the state legislature to complete and enact. Um, so the, there, there's a national movement to enfranchise 16 and 17 year olds. Um, and if the state legislature agrees, we could have 16 and 17 year olds in the Union 38 towns vote in our, in our municipal elections only. It would not affect state elections or federal elections. It would not allow them to run for office because under the age of 18, you can't sign a legally binding contract. Um, my interest in this as an educator and a school committee member is um, to, to help our young people learn to engage this way in their communities. And my hope is that if we can introduce them to town elections and town annual meeting, you know, while they're still in the, the safety and security of their public high school experience, that they will become lifelong voters, that they will run for office themselves, um, and they will engage in all of these things, um, not particularly looking to change the outcomes of any elections. <laughs> Um, so we are submitting citizen petitions. We've already submitted them now in Deerfield and Sunderland. We're working on the one for Conway, ones for Conway and Waitley. Um, I, I realized that we turned it in later than would be expected for Deerfield, and maybe it's not possible to accommodate it on the annual town meeting this spring. It would be totally fine to hold it for a future town meeting. Um, yeah, we understand that's your process. I, I'm happy to answer any questions anybody has. Um, I, I had that one question. You had talked about um, you're doing this in conjunction with actual classwork and civil um, government participation. And so could you just explain that a little bit? Because that's the thing that got me pretty excited about this. Oh, yeah, me too. Um, so uh, I, I'm I, I'm working with Laura Moore, who's the AP government teacher at Frontier. Um, she, because of her, her school physician, she's not allowed to 
like recruit kids to do this very political action, but she's very interested in having more students be able to vote. And she and I have talked about potentially running sort of an annual workshop you know, that is available to students who are voting for the first time, but any community members who want to know, you know, how do you register to vote? Is it hard to vote? What are these town offices? Well, what does the board of assessors do? And what is the annual town meeting? You know, what's going to happen um, so that we can welcome everybody into that process? Yeah, I like that. I mean, it's a great, I just think it's, it's good. It's real good. You know, I, I think if we're getting 16 and 17 and 18 year olds who are engaging in it for the first time, some of them are going to bring along their parents who are engaging in town politics for the first time. Yeah, I agree. Tim, did you have any um, questions for Jessica? No, I think it's a wonderful idea. I don't know uh, whether it be the annual town meeting or the special town meeting, but uh, I don't know what state the petition is in. Um, so. Well. Uh, I think what we're saying, Jessica, is that um, we'll see about getting the petition certified. Our our drop dead date, I mean, our warrant is closed, but mm -hmm. and our but our drop dead date for like taking out warrant articles or adding in warrant articles is really March twenty eighth. So mm -hmm. um, we'll we'll look and see what the situation is with your petition um, from our legal um, advisor um lisa mead and and we'll um we'll talk about it and make a decision in the next week or two okay that's wonderful thank you so much yeah uh, if uh, i'll say we are hoping that if we can get all four union 38 towns doing this together it might be able to recruit a little bit of media interest in the general topic and you know get some more attention to our little corner of southern franklin county oh. so <laughs> if that helps tip the balance about which meeting it might go to <laughs> if it's only Sunderland, you know, in Conway, it, it's not quite as persuasive a story, I think. <laughs> right. Well, we'll, we'll I'm, I'm sure we're going to be looking at it positively. All of us have positive feelings about it. So, I had a um, question. Lisa, I don't know if, if you've heard the discussion. Have you seen this in any of your other communities that, that you work with? Yeah. No, thank you, um, um, Trevor. And um, nice to hear you, Carolyn. So I haven't, none of my other communities have, but I have heard about it and certainly uh, taken a look at what is necessary. And as, um, as Jessica indicated, uh, those communities that she indicated, Somerville, uh, Lowell, Boston, um, Cambridge, um, they have passed it on the local level. You might remember though, also, um, those are cities um, and cities don't have to have their um, uh, bylaws or ordinances reviewed by the attorney general. However, this would be a piece of special legislation um, yep. because the only way it could be enacted, as she suggested, is by an act of the legislature. Um, right. These these young folks wouldn't be called voters. They would be called registrants or pre-registrants because they're not of voting age and voters are is a defined term in the state statute under, under yep. Chapter 54 or something like that. So, um, there are some communities that have done it for sure, and it does have to be approved by the state legislature. Um, just as a just as a caution, um, you would not be able to have any local elections on a state primary or a state or federal election day. Um, uh -huh. the, so, right, because the, you can't, you couldn't mix the local stuff with the state or federal um, activity because it, it, those those voters or pre-registrants wouldn't be able to vote in those elections. So. Um, there's some discrepancies like that that would have to be worked out, but um, the way that she described it is absolutely the way um, that you have to go about it. It would be a, basically a request for a home rule petition, um, yeah. and it would have to move off to the legislature. It wouldn't be a local bylaw. Okay, great. Those are good, good points to think of. That's great. Cool. Okay. Thank you, Jessica. We really appreciate oh, your coming. Thank you for your interest and support. It's great to see all of you. Good thank you. Bye, Bye Jessica. Take care. Tim, do you want to give us a quick update on the 1888 building? Um, well, I'm presenting presenting to the Community Preservation Committee tonight the general um, outline of the application. Um, I have want to suggest that the select board approve a slightly different uh, review committee. Uh, I've asked Vern Harrington, he's a former Formerly, well, he's still a contractor, I guess. He's semi-retired. Whether he would serve on it, um, I've asked a 
local architect from Shelburne Falls Associates, Joe Joseph Matty, uh, to serve as an architect. Um, spoken with Christopher Dunn about sitting in on this as a planner, um, and then a select board member and a member of the town building advisory committee mm -hmm. to help review. Um, we're we're in the process of looking at going out for a, um, another RFQ to find a hopefully find a local architect that can be more responsive to us as a community as we work through the process. Um, my intent is to tell CPC that um, because we are just finding out about the $4 million grant and learning about how we have to work with USDA to access the money, that we probably should bring this to the fall special town meeting. Yeah. Um, that would give us an opportunity to have at least one of not possibly two public hearings before the special town meetings to ask community for input on the conceptual design that comes out of this new process. And then to um, after after community engagement, come back and have another discussion in, in anticipation of presenting it at the fall meeting. Sounds like the plan. It's definitely homework. I'm, I'm supportive of it. I don't think we need a vote. I think there's consensus, right, Trevor? You feel okay with that? Sure. Yeah. Start engaging. I feel in, in fine with that too, Trent, Tim. That way um, you can stay within the general outlines of what you're talking about without us having a... Yeah, solve. no, that's fine. And, and I really think adding a component of an architect who has no interest in bidding on this project mm. and a, a contractor who's had, you know, 40 plus years of experience would help provide some expertise that I think we might have been lacking in the previous uh, iteration of this project. So thank yeah. you. Great. Sounds good. Okay. Um, uh, Casey, I'm sorry because I, I was <laughs> coming back from the town hall. I missed how um, I, I see that Lisa's on the phone. You said she was in traffic. How are we going to handle the warrant um, review now? She and I have discussed. Well, I am actually, I'm actually pulling up to my office. So if you guys can. Oh, great. Oh, great. I don't... Let, let me get into my office and turn you on. I'll be with you. How's yeah, that? Perfect. 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 That's fine. That's fine. I just, I just great. missed the beginning. So yep. thank you. Perfect. All right. I'll be, I will be right back. So okay. give a quick update um, while we're waiting. Um, so I had, uh, cause I, I need to also speak tonight to the CPA group about the town common. And um, we con reconstituted the committee again last night. Uh, Kate Lawless was our chair and then she had stepped away. It's been a long process and she had other things to do and we're, we were grateful for her guidance. Um, so we had elected uh, Melissa Hale to chair our committee again or to chair it this time. And we kind of got together last night to kind of just give them an update of what we've been working on here and how it relates to the common and where we'd like to go. And um, I need to give us an update to the CPA tonight about, you know, why we haven't done anything yet and what our plan is going forward. And I just thought maybe I'd run it by you guys too and see if we're all on the same page. So um, when I talk to them, I know that we're, we're all thinking the same thing. So um, we had the meeting and I updated them on, a couple of things, the the Leary lot project that's moving forward and um, the grants we got for the energy, um, the um, the car chargers and all the other infrastructure stuff. And then um, I kind of updated them on where still, I don't know, I haven't had an update on how we're paying for either roads or Leary lot yet. We don't have an answer Okay, yet. So, so I mentioned to them that we're not sure which way that's going yet, but one way or the other, we're funding that project, and um, and that so so there'll be some good infrastructure work going on, kind of near the common. Um, I updated them on, and maybe I don't know if I've updated everybody on the DOT meeting yet. Um, maybe we have. I think we maybe have had a meeting since then. Chris Chris was there. Christopher Dunn was there, and uh, Casey Casey was in on Zoom too at the meeting. So we talked about. Um, really the meeting was about the mill village road and you know how to make that safer that intersection and then i we 
at the end, we talked about, they brought up a program they're working on about trying to make it safer and they want to remove, they're forcing the removal of the parking spots around Park Street and on Sugarloaf Street. Um, you know, I know the church is parked there, but there just can't be any parking spots painted. And so they're looking at how they paint um, Sugarloaf Street for bike lanes and traffic calming. And we gave them an update of the common you know, pathways that we had now, and they're just going to look at that and look at their plans and make sure that those align because that's been our major holdup is like not wanting to do any pathways on the common and then find out DOT wants them somewhere else. And so I think we're working together and Christopher's kind of shepherding that through to make sure those plans jive together and work together. Um, and then I told them that, you know, we all kind of our consensus was let's do something uh, this spring and get uh, pathways in, benches in. Maybe we hold off on the fountain work. Um, maybe we just do underground, whatever, electrical stuff, conduit work, and then come back to it later. So really, I'm just going to give them an update, uh, CPA, an update on where we're at and uh, that we want to move forward with something this year probably wouldn't do a major thing waiting for DOT to give us some guidance on where things lay out. So I want to make sure you guys are still on board with that. Absolutely, Trevor. I'm fine. Good. Good, good. Okay. Lisa's here. Thank Hi. you, Lisa. Welcome. Uh, Thank you for being patient. No worries. No worries. We're always thrilled to have you. Okay. Great. So um, you just want to start at the beginning or do you, are there anything particularly Nasty, you want to attack first? Why don't we just go through it? Uh, can you share your screen, Casey or um, or Chris, so we can pull it up? Can yeah, I can. It? I can do that. That's Is there a way that way. you can share the screen without taking over my whole desktop? Because <laughs> I have it up on my screen right now. Oh, think, you know, so well, you should be able to with right, and then yeah. Tim, I think if you hit escape after I take over the screen, it will let you leave the full screen mode and just okay. have that open. I'll try that. Bit. Okay. All right. Let me get this going. Okay. Thank you. There we go. Okay. It should load any minute now. I think we're looking at a, uh, hold on. Yep. The escape does work. Oh, good. <laughs> Excellent. I'm free. <laughs> yeah. Can everybody see this? Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. So uh, I guess to start, there was, I saw there was a comment at the greetings. I don't know if that was just, we just did, we didn't want to pass over articles. If we yes. Didn't. It's just a con okay. It's literally just a comment okay. to let everybody know. Sounds good. Was there a discussion about elected officials compensation that I saw in an email somewhere? There was. So there was a change to elected officials compensation that I didn't catch right away, but it's been corrected. So in the budget, um, the town moderator increased compensation for special elections. Oh, to 100. Oh, so 100 I've to 200. corrected it. That makes sense. I've corrected yep. it. Yep, that sounds good. Okay, good. Uh, so that's so it's A is the reports, B is compensation, A, uh, C is the acknowledgments of gifts, and then you'll have a tables that you'll put in. Right. Um, okay, so there's something I need to do here. Chris, can you give me permission? to share something. I have an update and it was based on a conversation I had with Lisa. Sure. Hold on. Now I have to escape. <laughs> I love escape. Escape is a smart um, friend. <laughs> but generally that's just the the, the table. So, right. And I'm I had sent out an updated copy of this. So does yours have all the tables in it? Or, no. Yeah, not yet. Okay. Yeah, because I can't screen share what I had talked to Lisa about, which was rearranging the personnel bylaw. Oh, um, that's on. That's coming later at four, right? Right. Okay. So what you're 
seeing a version that doesn't have that. That's why I, was, I wanted to be able to share my screen because I oh. realized that I had sent it out. I didn't know if I copied Chris. I don't remember. Um, I not Casey, have... can you try sharing your screen? I just made you a co-host, so I'm hoping that works. There we go. Thank you. Perfect. Is this the right one? It works. Okay. So can you see the where it says Article 4 and it's got all this line of comment on the side? Yes. 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 First section is really the explanation about why we should change the bylaw. But we haven't gotten to that yet, right? Are we good with a one and two? There's nothing else here. Reserve fund, OPEB, liability, all that stuff, right? That's Article standard. One, I just have to fill in the two. numbers. And can you hit your magnify button? I can. As soon as I figure out where it is. It's over on the right bottom. Better? Yes. That's okay. good. Yep. All right. So okay. what what so article one and two and three are fine. And three are standard language. Right. Mm -hmm. And they the placement is the same as we've had in past years. Right. Then you get to four. Then we get to four. And so the explanation around four is first, this would if this change to the bylaw was accept were to be accepted by town meeting and you know by the board to actually place. Yeah. This would take out the benefits and policies that are in the bylaw, but make a few changes to the bylaw itself that outline a more clear purpose and intent, and then a process by which we could create a manual and how personnel board and the select board would have authority over making policies for town employees. Yeah. Um, and so take a read through it. I actually got this language from council, will, um, Jane Friedman. Will this need a hearing at all or? It will. And I've already okay. got that. I've already talked to personnel about it. I have a date for that hearing. I have the notice ready. I just have to publish it. Then we can do all that before the meeting. Yes. Okay, great. And so the, right. the personnel board would have a hearing. They're going to have a review meeting on April 9th. They have a hearing on the 23rd. Recommendations would need to be included in the guide. They wouldn't be able to be included in the yeah. warrant because I have quorum issues with personnel. They only have three members and one member's out of the country for two weeks so we couldn't do it any sooner okay that's um, but essentially that's what the language of this article does yep. lisa and i spoke earlier and she suggested so there's two things that are a factor the current personnel bylaw requires us to vote the classification compensation plan at town meeting right it has to be approved by the legislative bod body this article would make that change however right. Because the two are tied together, Lisa suggested we put the personnel bylaw change ahead of the classification yeah. compensation. If it if this article were to be approved, it would allow us. It, it essentially makes the select board the approving group for the class comp, right? By virtue of going through the process to approve that, that's outlined here. Yeah. But it would mean if it was approved, we would be able to pass over the class comp article, which is the next one, right? Right. Lisa? Yeah, that that's correct. And then yeah. if it if failed, you'd have the class comp article on here, um, and then you would vote it. So yeah, they do. Um, that that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. And so the other pieces to this, and you're going to get a memo, but the other pieces to this are the personnel board wants to have a draft policy available for people to look at if they would like to. What you see in the establishment of personnel policies in this proposed bylaw is elements of what, what would be included in policies. It's not details, it's elements. Right. And the reason you see these major elements is because this is what a policy is supposed to do. It creates a class comp. It creates a centralized record keeping system. Mm -hmm. It creates rules and regulations, disciplinary procedures, and it also creates policies like FMLA and stuff. Mm -hmm. The reason you don't name it is because you give yourself the flexibility to, to include add, all those things, but you don't away. limit yourself. Right. Yep. Am I right, Lisa? Yeah. That I mean, we've had a number of our communities, um, particularly smaller ones get rid of the bylaw and do exactly this because it provides more flexibility in the middle of the year, for example, for the select board and the personnel board to do what they need to do right. um, and to be more nimble in dealing with employee matters. Yep. So there is one element that I wanted to 
mention to everybody in this iteration, there is no allowance to have the town administrator on the personnel board. Currently, the town administrator is an ex officio non voting member. One right. of the reasons is the town administrator represents management, which is the select board. Um, I would propose that we amend this language to include the town administrator because in the composition, there is a major shift here, and that is to allow to provide a place at the table inclusion of a member of the staff that is not the town administrator, but a regular bylaw employee to be a part of this committee by virtue of an election of other town employees, other bylaw employees. And it creates some inclusion. I mean, there's no space at the table right now for employees to bring their concerns or potential questions to personnel board. Right. This would allow more inclusivity. Mm -hmm. um, but in this iteration, it doesn't mention the town administrator. And currently the town administrator does some of that support but also represents a perspective from management. And so when I was reviewing it again, I thought we need to allow, we need to put that fifth member in ex officio non-voting if that's how the board wants to handle it, which is currently how it is. Yeah. But I think that needs to be there because the HR representation is key. The town administrator right. does the majority of the HR with the treasurer. Yeah. So, so suggestion. Yeah, and and you'll note in here that the employee rep is also ex officio, right? So there's actually three members of the personnel board, then one ex officio member by, as the uh, employee rep, and then, um, as Casey suggests, um, she wants to modify this to include um, the TA. Would um, would a quorum of the board be met? with uh say two members and an ex officio or something like it gives more flexibility they could still meet and talk but one obviously to vote you'd need you'd no, still the, the quorum would be the the three if the if the three members are the actual board i see yeah i didn't i wondered how it so affected that are so that's one other element to take into account currently lisa we have a five member personnel <laughs> board yeah um, been unable to fill two vacancies so it forces us to push business off if we can't get a bit a meeting yeah is there a way that we could allow for quorum because ex i hear what you're saying but for purposes of voting if you had two members of the voting group plus one member of a the ex officio member does that allow them to take action well, I, I guess so. The answer is we. For, so first of all, we can add it to say that for the purposes of obtaining a quorum to meet, you can use the ex officio members. But then, if you only have two, if you have two, just just right. play this out. If you only have two members, yes, two members could pass on something. But if it's a one to one vote, then a tie vote fails, right? So um, the answer is yes, you can do that. Um, we could just draft it in here to be clear about what what it takes to have a meeting. Right. Okay, that would be good because I that's sort of the issue they're running into now, but that's because of <laughs> composition and the lack of seat people right. sitting in those seats. Right. Okay. Right. right. So okay. So you would work the board on that. consider yeah. adding the town administrator as an ex officio non voting member? Uh, I I think so. I mean, you have to be. There's so much that goes on that you work with intimately. Yeah, but... I'm 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 fine with it too because how how can you not be really? Yep, Tim. So yeah, just just a plea to keep an eye on the screen for all the people who are not in the room. Um, yeah, I think clarifying what constitutes a quorum. If you have a three member board, two people is a quorum. Um, right, it's a. So I think all the things you suggested, Lisa, are good, right? And yeah. Um, even if you have two ex officios and you have one member are we thinking we're going to allow that to be a meeting it doesn't really sound like it should no. be but no well they could have a meeting but they can't they can't take any action right they, they could have a meeting if they needed to but they can't take any action right. so they really can't. spell out okay. the yeah needed would it make okay. more sense to add an under to add a member well i i mean i think you could you could draft around what tim is saying so you could say that a quorum has to be at least um two of the members 
and yeah. can also be one, but you're still at two, right? So right. Um, I, I, th I think you have to just, you can either have the quorum be the three members and that means two can meet to meet, right? You can have two and have a meeting notwithstanding your ex officio. So if only three members show up and they're the three members of the personnel board, excuse me, if only two members show up and they're the two members of that vote, yeah. then those two members can vote, right? Um, and so that's how the quorum could be decided. Yeah. If you want to have five, I mean, in either case, you don't necessarily need the non-voting members because you always need at least three or in a five member board and at least two in a two member board to vote. Right. Okay. Right. I just wanted to now, now that I'm looking at it, I just wanted to make sure I was not okay. missing the boat on something. Um, yeah. All, all right. right. Yeah. And a larger board just runs the risk of, you know, Different. running into quorum issues when you have two voting members out of three, you can act when you have, Two voting voting members out of five, you can't do anything. Right. And if the tie, if it is a tie situation, it's got to be brought up in another meeting before you can take action. Yeah. Right. And so we've run into enough quorum issues and not being able to vote lately that I just that's why it comes up as I'm thinking about Still composition. Still, we bring it down. Five. Yeah, I think it's a good point, Casey. But I think by bringing it down to three and having that be what's necessary, a majority of the three to quorum to meet. You, you cover that problem. Okay. Right. So if we address that, that would be helpful. Okay, okay I can I can draft that. Right. Okay. Um, the comp plan. And so the comp plan is our standard language. Yep. Um, and we're still good. So we're still in flux because of the budget. Right, we haven't voted So I wouldn't yet. put the table in at this point. Okay. I would take that out. All right. Um, so then we get, that was article five. Yep. Article six. Okay. Is it so here we are, Lisa, at our, our conundrum about what's going to be our funding source for the roads and what's going to be our funding source for the Leary lot. This first article is to transfer from a stabilization fund or otherwise provide um what's left to fund to fin to pay for the repairs to the roads. Yeah. Okay that number yet because we're still going through budget process so i would put a sum of, i i wanted to be able to put an amount in yeah maybe i'll have that amount by the 28th i'm not or later on in the process but right now i don't have it so there's a couple things you can do here you could you could make this article even more uh, general right you could say to see if the town will vote to um appropriate transfer or otherwise provide yep funds right to uh you know of an amount you could say whatever amount you think and that can always change in the motion to fund extraordinary road and sidewalk reconstruction repairs right yeah. and yeah. then your motion will be vote to transfer from whatever you decide and yeah. then the exact amount okay but we would still need the two-thirds vote from stabilization though right yeah. if it comes from stabilization you will definitely need the two-thirds yeah okay all right. I understand that. That's actually, that sounds really good. That well, sounds and, and my, my concern, I guess my concern on all this is getting that answer about the Leary lot funding using ARPA versus stabilization, because um, I, I, don't, I don't know if Lisa was aware of that yet or not. We're, we're trying to fund the Leary lot project with the ARPA funds, but if we can't use it to match the federal grant, um, then we were going to use the stabilization to pay for that and then use our ARPA to pay for the road repair. Yeah, uh, so your ARPA funds you have to have under contract before the end of the year, right? You know that. So we thought yeah. we, we could use that to pay the road repair and that way that's just done. And then we could we could, um, we could could use the general stabilization to do the Leary lot. I just didn't want to vote the you know, we go ahead and vote the roads, they're all paid off. And then the town goes, yeah, we're not going to do the Leary lot now. We're, you know, so I just want a guarantee that we're going to get them funding. You know, if we're going to pay the roads with the ARPA, then we need to, we need to move that Leary lot funding for general stabilization for like that. The, one of those has to go first so that we don't wind up paying for the roads with ARPA and having no money to do the Leary lot. 
So, so this article can be, you know, I mean, obviously, whichever you want to do first, but I think you can make it general enough to give you flexibility. Okay. For um, whatever you decide before town meeting for the motion. Yeah. Okay. And what exactly, just to clarify, does under contract in the ARPA context mean? I mean it means under contract. It means you have to you have to have the funds obligated. Um, you, I'm sorry to be obtuse, but when you say obligated, we've decided we're going to spend ARPA on the 1888 building, seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Is that obligated? No. Okay. You have to have what what it's construction contract in so sign? You have to have a construction contract. Yeah. Or if you're, you know, or other, some other, whatever is going to cost $750,000, right? So it, it you need to have a contract signed. So if it's a construction contract, you need to have the construction contract signed. Well, yeah. we, we could, Tim, we could have a design um, fee. We could use it towards a design fee or something like that. I don't, I, yeah, that's fine. I don't, don't want to um, hold up the meeting. We can discuss discover what we're going to do going forward. So, okay, good. Thank you. Yep. Well, just, I guess then just to clarify, um, since we've already had all of this major work uh, on the roads, we can, because we, we turned the ARPA into, um, forget what the term was. Um, we took, we revenue replacement. Thank replacement. you. Revenue thank replacement. You. We could then just straight pay those bills that we have, we have done, uh, that we, you know, had all that work done by all our subcontractors, we could just yep. pay that bill. Okay, great. Yep. And, and that's yep. on contract and that's, okay, that's a little more secure. It feels like that's the safer way to go for that portion of the ARPA and then uh, have general stabilization pay for the Leary lot. Um, you know, just switching how, what buckets of money they get pulled from. I just want to make one, one make sure the Leary lot's secure before we go and spend it on the the other item. And so Lisa, we haven't been able to get an answer from the feds about whether you can use ARPA funds since they are a federal funding source towards this federal grant that we got as a match. Yeah, and I don't yeah, I, I don't know. You're gonna yeah, you have to go to that fund administrator to talk about that. Because it feel like it's, you know, we turned it into revenue replacement, but it they still kind of, you know, are using you it doesn't wash it out completely, right? Yeah, I, I think you're going to have to talk to the feds about that, whoever the program administrator is. And try and... We, I we have, have a webinar tomorrow um, that I'm hoping will resolve in an answer to that question. Otherwise, um, I'm also, I've been working with our town accountant, Brenda Hill, at uh, trying to find an answer for that. And she was in touch with our auditor, Tom Scanlon, to see if he had a, a, a good solution um, in mind because she thinks he would be expert in what can and can't be done with ARPA. Great. Okay, thank you. Tim has his hand up. Loop. Yeah, I was just going to ask, um, and I'm not going to name names on this, but if um, a building project came through with a large uh, building permit fee, um, would we need to have language in this warrant to expend it for the roads, or, or it's just a general fund that we can draw from, or Right. Those are local receipts. So those are considered part of your general fund. Right. Okay. And we Thank wouldn't use those until after free cash was certified. Yep. Right. So September. In September. Yeah. Okay. okay. So okay. Article seven. Yep. Rescinds it was asked to put a rescission vote on for the borrowing authority for the right. road and re reconstruction and repair. So that's that article. That's good. And right, we wanted the to sort out the road uh, repair. Uh, payable. Payable with stabilization funds and make sure that's all got between Leary Lot, road work is all sorted out before we rescind this borrowing authority. Right. We just, again, didn't want to get caught flat-footed. And... Is, so is this the one that failed? Uh, it failed and then it passed. So it was a second vote we had, Elisa, or, or later on, and it passed. So we do right. bar an authority for five million, but we think we've peeled together enough money that we don't need to borrow. Wait. So can I just ask a question? Sure. Um, why would you rescind it now before you do the work? Well, most of the work is done. Lisa, everything that's emergency work is going to be pretty much done by the end of the month. Yeah. Okay. 
We definitely and uh, I mean, everything that's remaining is going to be done uh, through long-term grants and other opportunity funding because okay. they're, not, they're not roads that are highly used. And we're trying to, and except for River Road, but River Road, we're going to um, do probably end up breaking into three mass works projects, separate projects. Okay. But that's, but that's after we figure out what we're going to do on that road. It's stable for now. The repairs we did have stabilized it. And it was also to build some general goodwill with the public because we said, look, if we can piece together enough help from the state and other things, we promise that we will not borrow if we don't have to. And so we wanted to kind of honor that as soon as we could. But yep. Tim? So just to be um, get Lisa's advice, uh, she may not have any on this. What would be the harm, just playing devil's advocate, of delaying this till the special town meeting uh, in the fall when it's totally clear we don't need to borrow money? Uh, because I don't think we do, Tim. But well, yeah, I'm just asking a question of Lisa. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no harm, but I, I mean, I didn't understand the, the, you know, kind of the representations that were made to the, yep. Yep. to the community, right? So the, the goodwill is a, is a big deal, um, which Good, is, thanks. so that's why I, that's why I asked the question. So I didn't understand that because there is no harm in delaying it. I mean, sometimes people don't rescind borrowing authority for years after a project is done, right? But, um, but you've got, I mean, you know, you asked for a lot of money and you made some representations about it. So th there's nothing harm, you know, you should That's do good. that. Thank you. Sounds good. So to Trevor's point earlier, do we want to put the Leary lot ahead of the I roads? Think, I think so, because yeah, I would bump, bump the, like just flip flop those two, just so that we knew Leary lot was paid for. And then we deal with the roads. Then we deal with the article. Yeah. Okay. Just so that everything kind of is, is, laid out everyone feels comfortable where the money's coming from and we everything's paid for and then we can go okay everything's all set let's rescind yep i i agree on that totally okay i just want to make sure i have that right yep. all right Sounds because good. that was I, I don't want the leary lot to be held up because we don't have the ability to borrow to move stabilization and all that kind of stuff right okay i think we can make it clear and what about the idea of this still seems like it's too high up in the list of things. I know it's there's an argument about it's fiscal year 24 and all that stuff. It seems like this is the thing that's going to be keeping people in their seats. I'm just asking why it's so high up. The uh, we can the move road it. stuff. I would move if we're going to move it to the end. Why don't we move all the yeah they all have to all, quote unquote fiscal year 24 bills to the end. Yeah, I I don't I don't really think that it matters, but if that's the way you like to organize it, yeah, I would be in favor of this being the last thing on. So we end on a high note. Everybody goes out of there realizing we just rescinded five million dollars in borrowing. Aren't we fiscally responsible? We can make that the last article. They still won't I'm okay with us. that. I no, I realize that, but it just seems you know a lot of people are going to leave after that. I know. And then, so why don't we do this? Well, why don't we move of... all this this section? Right. Move that to the end. Make the borrowing rescission the last article, and then stack it with stack above it with Six, the roads payment, the Leary lot, and then yep. these these old bills and the snow and ice above the the those last that last chunk that we just talked about, and then we deal with the FY twenty four. We just do it at the end of the meeting yeah that does that work it's um, fine with me yeah I, i'm sorry i'm i've got 10 minutes left before i, I have to jump off so let's move through yeah i think that actually sounds like a good idea because i would put the smaller bills first tim and then yeah. add the leary lot the road payment and then the borrowing rescission I, I and and for me i feel like those like the snow and ice and any previous bills could just get put up at the front they don't need to wait until the end but okay so you want to leave those at the front but move I the, think so. the big chunk yeah. of payables towards the end yes okay. yep all right because that's what we normally do is we pay off that stuff we get to the omnibus budget do all that stuff and then we get to the get to these bigger articles i think that makes sense okay 
I just want to write myself a yep. note so I don't no, forget. That's fine. Um, okay. So sewer. to that point, we have the snow and ice, which yep. is currently Article 9. Sewer we building. have, I actually have the amount for the sewer, the fiscal year 2024 sewer bill. So I was going to put that in. Mm -hmm. um, and then what's the. This is a. Shoot, there's one missing. Oh, that's why. I need you. I was going to ask the board if they would open the warrant to add another old bill that we found. And I that's the bill that. for um, the Eversource publishing for poll hearings. Right. That's fine. Yeah, you could stick that with the. Other. I would put that in right around this old. I would probably put it right by. With the wastewater. With the, the wastewater bill. Yeah, that's fine. And so I would leave, I'll leave those up towards the top of the warrant. Yep. Okay. That's good. Okay. Casey, you can make it one article. Okay. You can just make it one article and say um, to pay the following unanticipated bills from prior year. Yeah. Okay. And we would do it as a consent, right? Uh, no, I wouldn't do that as a, like, you could just do one article with both bills. That's all. Yeah. All right. Uh, Plus that needs four fifths. So don't complain. Uh, yeah, it would complicate it. So just you I don't have a problem putting it together, but keep it as a separate warrant article. Yeah. Um, Wait, what? No, what Carolyn is saying is fine. Put both of them in yeah. um in one article um because it's four fifths, but don't put it up with the consent articles. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. And eleven is the uh transfer from free cash the okay, money that so was put. 11 is now that we have a decision from the legislature and anf that we can put our opioid funds in a special fund yeah this we had allowed that money because we didn't know what was going to happen we yep. allowed that money to roll into free cash so we now have to take it out and put it in that special fund lisa my question about this is do we have to i put it in here but do we have to notify the public about the special fund and how it was created because that's the language that i put in here um you have to say that it's going to be spent for uh to see if the town will vote to transfer i did say what it would be spent for I yeah guess. i would yeah i would leave it just like this okay that's good all right so the next one is the general fund but or the omnibus budget 12 is omnibus 13 okay. is sewer enterprise fund. Yeah. 14 is scams. Yeah. And this is all the same structure we've used in the past. Right. Um, 15 is now here's where we get. Okay. So we have this question and it, it may be that we have to add something here, Lisa, we have this question and I was thinking we could do this in one article, but I'm not sure. We had an FY20, we had two FY24 requests from SCEMS to reallocate funds that were approved in prior, that were approved, reallocate them toward different projects, but in this fiscal year. Do we need to have a separate article for that? It would be capital funds. So normally we do capital all at once, but I didn't know if we could combine the FY24 with the current capital article, which is a little further down. Um, so, so is it is it the next one that the capital one is the? Well, um, no, actually, capital is where is the capital? Well, I think they, so. They want to reallocate money that was previously allocated yeah. in. I, I think you have to call that out. Okay. Yeah. So that'd All be right. its own article. Yep. Is this is 15 the capital plan? Yes. 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 And so if it was going to be something. a separate SCEMS article, I would put it after the SCEMS budget line, which is article 14 right now. Yeah. yeah. Between 14 and 15. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. All right, and so 15 is capital. Yeah, Six. 16 is community preservation fund budgets. And Carolyn, I've talked to Kathy Sylvester a couple of times in the last couple of days, and they haven't made a decision on any of their projects. So 
I realize the board is loath to pass over articles, but in this case, I think we have to leave it there because if we take it out and they haven't made a decision by the 28th, it only forces us to have a special and vote anything later. What what I told no what I, what I told Kathy is that um, move ahead with their app. They have one application. Make a decision. If if it's not a clear decision, have their public hearing, and then we would figure out what we want to do um, after their public hearing. Because I think their public hearing is the twenty seventh, right? I don't. I know they have a meeting the twenty seventh. I didn't know whether it was a public hearing. All or right. Not. Well, I, I just leave it in right now. See if the application is moving forward or not. If it is moving forward, then you know we'll make a decision just to leave it. Are we okay. just saying that there's um? I don't. There's not. They, not they, they might not have anything. Oh, okay. Um, Other than just putting it where it needs to go. Right, and right. so. If because I told Kathy the drop dead date was the March twenty eighth, and that we could pull it out if there was no if there was no CPC, we could just pull it out and. Well, they still um, have well, to. I mean, you still have yeah. the dividing it, right? Yeah, I guess we have to leave it here. Yeah. I mean, oh yeah, okay, that's right. That they've is. They've got to have the ten percent allocations, and then they've got to have. So there yeah, will be no. some CPC activity. It's just yeah. whether there'll okay. be a project or not. Correct. Right. Correct. All right. That's right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, was, I just didn't want a whole bunch of articles that we're going to pass over. That's all. It just doesn't look good. Um. All right. So. Oh, you're talking. Article this is seventeen tax is payment. the quarterly tax payment system, effective July first, twenty twenty five, which is FY twenty six. So it gives over a year to notify the public. Okay. And I want everybody to know that we're all working to make sure that we've got information to provide the public that you guys could speak to at town meeting that we can include in the, the warrant or in the guide. Yeah. But we also will have to develop a a plan to message this out to the community. Yeah, I, say, I know it, people are concerned is about there any hearing that needs to happen or anything like that. Ask Lisa. No. No, no it's just a decision made by just Yep, it's just a decision to be made. And I I was surprised to know that you guys weren't on quarterly billings. You weren't on quarterly? or Yeah. Uh, most everybody I know is on quarterly because it's just a much better thing for cash flow. Definitely better for cash flow, for sure. It's been it was a hard year this year, for sure, with everything that happened. And with so many loans and now that we have loans that have different tape, they do. different periods, we've got to have consistent okay. cash flow. So it also it's better for your bond rating, too, you guys. Yep. I'm sorry. I keep kicking this box in the table. I'm going to move okay. So that was Article 17. And does the board have any preference about where you want to see this? Is it, no, okay? Fine, is yeah. it okay in this yep. area? Works good. Okay. Article, what's now Article 18 is the request to approve the Board of Trustees filing a petition with probate and family court seeking certain modifications to the charitable trust. Yep. That's fine. Are there any other changes to the language we need to think about, Lisa? I know we don't. But does this incorporate the changes that I made, Casey? I believe so, but I'll go back and check. I think that's what I took was I took your changes, but I'll go back and check and make sure. Yeah, if, if it includes our cha my changes, I'm okay with it. Okay. Um, so Article 19 is the CIPC bylaw change, and this is still kind of up in the air. There's The placeholder is still here, and there's an explanation. There's two issues that CI uh, Capital Improvement Planning Committee has run into. One is they're having quorum issues. So they've got two appointments that are not filled because the appointing authority can't find anybody to sit that's willing to sit. So the other thing is, so that means quorum is affected. Um, the other issue is the deadline to turn in capital requests. Right. And I did a little bit of research just to see what the statute said on Yeah, this. we changed it a few years back. Yeah, we changed the deadline. We changed some of the mechanics of doing of the process. But the quorum issue is is a big deal because the first meeting Capitol had in February, they couldn't do any business because they didn't have quorum. Right. So, I mean, they could talk about things, but they couldn't make any decisions. So I had the reason I'm explaining this a bit is because I'm wondering if there's language we could put in the in the uh, bylaw, Lisa, that would 
specify what quorum looks like if there's a vacancy? Yeah, of course we can. Um, well, only in the turn, only in the event there's, yeah. I mean, you could copy essentially what, um, the uh, Wetlands Protection Act regulations provides for the Conservation Commission, right? So uh, that says that um, if, let's say there's seven members, but um, so there has to be at least a quorum of people meet. So four people have to meet, but um, in order to pass anything, it can then be a majority of those four. Okay, that's what I was hoping because I see an example in OML about how you could deal with this if you have specificity about what quorum means in the event that there aren't people sitting at the table. Yeah, so that's about as close as we can get, the most flexible that you can get. You always have to have a quorum of the body, right, to have a meeting. Right. Um, but that doesn't mean you need that same quorum to pass things. Then you can say, okay, of that quorum, a majority is necessary to pass something. Okay. Is so, CIPC seven members or is it five members or? Seven. 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 Is seven a good number? We always have trouble with seven and nine member boards. Yeah. Well, two of them are filled by the moderator. The committees have all, all five of the committees have, have members that are active. So it's, so we have one from school committee, one from planning board, one from the select board. Um, one from finance. Finance. And one from assessors. Right. And then two moderator appointments. And so with all those town officials, why are we having trouble getting quorums? Well, if because if someone can't attend, because the quorum is, a, is based on the number of seats or the number of appointees. Right. We didn't have enough at that first meeting um, because people were out of town and it, it ha it's it been an issue in the past. So, well, that's why I was asking seven versus five. I mean, that but, was brought it up. It doesn't have to be addressed. Um, it's just if we were able to use some language similar to what, like Lisa says, the Wetlands Protection Act, it does give them some flexibility if they, because there are requirements in order to do capital that if we don't have quorum and they can't make a decision, yeah. we're not following the bylaw, Tim. And so- Right, no, that's fine. I, I would raise the point about right. large boards lead to quorum problems. Yes. And if one of the solutions is to make it five instead of seven, maybe that's something we should consider, but okay, I don't have strong feelings about it. Right. I don't even have strong feelings about whether this needs on to be on this eight annual town meeting warrant or it couldn't be pushed to the fall, but- Okay, so you guys need to tell me whether you want to push it or not. I have a meeting with CIPC tomorrow. Fall is fine too. It's just I think the really the issue is the deadlines because we have no idea what our budget looks like or anything like that. And then all of a sudden, you know, so that was my applications are in. I mean, and that that we could do all this in the fall. I mean, does that make sense? It gives us a little bit of time. Well, to... I would prefer it in the fall because what we need to do is think about it on from a practical point of view, what okay. things have happened, how things come in. And I don't want to rush this because it is a it is a whole change. And I have, you know, been on the CIPC since the very beginning and was part of how we established the committee. And we have made a couple changes yep. to make it more practical, but I don't yep. like to rush stuff. So I would like to put this off and myself would like to put this off until the fall where we have more time well, to work on it. Okay. We don't have to have a motion. We can just have consensus to take it out. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I just put it in there. All right. So what's now Article 20 is the vote to, or is the request to amend the Community Preservation Committee. And this is based on language that's noted bold and underlined, and deletions are noted in strike through. Language that was developed by council working, you know, amongst, you know, Kathy, myself, talking to Lisa and Matt Provencher. And trying to come up with an answer that allows us to have someone sitting on the committee, CPC, that's interested in promoting affordable housing in town. Because the statute does not allow us, because we don't have a local housing authority, our only other option is the regional housing authority. And there's no representation from them. So it leaves us not only with a quorum issue, but it leaves us with a, with the inability to promote 
affordable housing, you know, and have a resident actually sit on the committee to be a part of that. So Lisa and I had a conversation earlier because I had talked to, I sent Kathy a copy of this language and she got back to me. And what she asked me was whether we could remove the language that says who doesn't currently hold elected or appointed office. And so I posed that question to Lisa earlier, because if you look through even the current bylaw, the appointees on the committee are all either elected or appointed officials. Yeah. So, um, Casey, I talked to Matt about this. Um, I think the answer is yes. Um, we can remove that language that requires that, that says they can't hold a current elected or appointed office. What we tried to do here, because we're kind of fiddling with the statute, is take something that the attorney general has already approved, um, and she and the attorney general has already approved this type of change in another community. Um, I'm pretty comfortable with taking out the language um, related to appointed or ele having to be not elected or appointed be because of the reason that Casey just said. So that's actually that. Lisa's reason. I was that's just parroting great. it. Okay. <laughs> so we could remove all the way to not currently serves as a municipal employee. You could say one resident of the town who um is interested in promoting. Correct. Yeah. So even the nor currently serves. Okay. I could take that. Yeah. No I I support that. Yeah. Okay. So I could make that change and Lisa will check and make sure I get it yep. right. Great. Uh, 21 is the property at for the Alice property for sale. It's okay. So fun. this is the land, just so Lisa knows. This is the barn. Yep. My, yep. I saw the email traffic on it for sure. This is the barn. I tried to do the best I could to write a, write the language based on you know what Lisa's given me before. Yeah. Um, I did confirm the map and lot. Do we need a registry deed reference, Lisa? No, you don't. Yeah, you know, we just to give notice to people about where it is and the map and lot does okay. that. All right. And I think that needs a two thirds majority, right? Correct. Okay. And then the, uh, the article, hold. what's now article 22 is the vote to authorize the select board to sell conveyed or otherwise dispose of the parcel that is the old St. James property. Now this wouldn't, I'm sure this wouldn't happen right away, but we need to be able to convey the property to a land developer so they can develop the senior housing on that property. And so Lisa crafted this language for us. So that's fine. So we're going to, we're going to hold or we're going to do this. No, I think you need to this in order for that, for senior housing to move ahead in the next several months, they need the ability to sell, to convey the property to the developer because. Oh, wait, the purpose... I, I thought 22 was, Oh, was 23. I was reading the note about DOT and still. Wasn't. Oh no. If the notes below that it's, it's, this is the article that's right after the new pro lane. The, oh, and then so 20, there would be no, what it went with 23 or something. Right. There would be Got no it. 23 or 24. I removed them. Got it. Okay. And Lisa sense. and I talked about that as well. Yep. There's a whole we'll notification process we're going to need right. to go through. But right now, so just to to follow up on his question about the DOT ROW thing for Stillwater, the plans are not approved. And I explained that to Lisa earlier. Really? They could be approved in the next several days, but there's no guarantee. And yep. so- what DOT had said to me, because there was some uncertainty about putting this on if we didn't have certain things in place and we hadn't had notifi the notification process for the right. property owners. Yeah. So if we wait and do this at the fall town meeting, it still meets the deadline right. or the timeline that DOT Perfect. has, but it also gives us that time to do all the yep. notifications and the, you know, the, we're okay. going to have. Uh, yes. Thank you. Because I, it would be horrible to have this defeated at town meeting. That's a horrible question enough. about. This land transfer of 2.1 acres, if we don't own it yet, should we actually be doing this yet? Oh, you're funny, Tim. I have just had that conversation with my uh, colleague, Joe Rotello, who's been working on this with Casey. We just had this at our real estate meeting yesterday. So the answer is um, you can you can do it for sure. I think somebody might ask that question, like what's holding this up? Why don't we own it yet? I mean, obviously, if town meeting authorizes you to sell it, but you never own it, then you never can sell it, right? So it's not, there's no harm in doing it. I right. think it would be a better, I think it would be better if the closing were going to take place before town meeting, but I don't know that to be the case. I know Joe's right. working on it. 
Um, but I, I actually, it's very funny that you said that because this is exactly the conversation we had yesterday. So and it's 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 one of those things where there are several things on here that are contentious, and I would prefer to not have a bunch of contentious stuff. I I, I personally think this could be kicked to the fall, but just for that reason, because we don't own it. Well, what's the so what's the um Casey? What's the planning process for um the senior housing? I mean. They're they're going to have to go. They're going to have to get you know do a feasibility study or do some preliminary. Um, you know they're going to have to go out to bid and all of that. So what's the likelihood that that's going to happen before October or November? They were <laughs> working on it. I think they wanted to be able to put the RFP out um, before the summer, but I don't actually know the timeline. Carolyn, what's the timeline? Well, um, we don't have a design yet. Uh, committed so the rfp isn't going to go out until we have a some kind of design and i don't think we're going to have a design ready for a few months because you know we want to talk about you know different creative ways to make sure we have as many units as possible so i i mean i think kicking it off to the fall is probably okay okay, okay. let's do that all right so I mean, we'll and if, if fun, by some miracle they get a design and they want to do an RFP before the fall, you just make the RFP contingent upon the sale of town, I mean, contingent upon approval of town meeting. Yep. So, and, I, and, I feel in by, and I feel by then we'll have, again, more success because, you know, we'll have, obviously we'll have a design that went into the RFP. So, yeah. I mean, then people will support it because we're moving forward. Yeah. Okay. So I'll take this one out. My last comment is the um the Deerfield Spirit Shop. Last I talked to him, he was fine with us. It was the up manager. Who is the manager? The manager he, said they didn't want it on there. The, this is after the we did it again. Not own yep. It. it doesn't matter. We were told we shouldn't put our I don't care what Steve says. When Steve we're told repeatedly it. by the manager they don't want to have our stuff out there, then we have to find another way to put it out. We're still complying with the bylaw. It's four places plus the town hall. Um I that doesn't I make any it, sense. It's, right. it's Cassie and the constables that keep running into it. And it's really the constable. So Lisa, just for reference, I took Spirit Shop out of here because it was a poll, it was a posting place for the warrant and the elections warrants. But we got a lot of pushback from the manager when the constables were trying to put the last special election warrant up. And then I called the owner of the business and he said, no, I'm happy to have it up there. Love to have it up. Sounds great. But- well. I mean, the owner may be saying that, but if the guy that's in charge is not letting it happen, that's a problem unless the owner gives them an edict. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, they must not be communicating because the own the owner of the business was like, yeah, go ahead. That's fine. Go yeah. Ahead. You better better safe than sorry because you don't want somebody taking it down. So right. I think Casey's plan to put it someplace else is a good idea. Yeah. So I have to bounce off this meeting, but I wanted to thank Lisa for... I do too, but... Yes. Being here by car and phone and office. <laughs> That's my pleasure. Dedicated. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you. Yep. See you in a bit. Jim. Thank you, Trevor. And thank you, Lisa. Um, so yeah, I just corrected it. So we have to have it in four places plus the town hall. So you have four the library, figure? the old Deerfield Post Office, South Deerfield Post Office, the Deerfield Convenience Store, and the Deerfield okay. Town Office. All right. That's fine. Okay. I'm good with that. And so I will make these changes and send this out because I know Dan's going to want to look at this and meet with you. He may want to sit down and meet with you guys at an upcoming meeting. Sure. Um, Lisa, I did have a chance to talk to him about the CPC article, so he's better informed on it. Okay. But he may have other questions, especially if, you know, the three of us meet with Cassie to talk about mechanics of the warrant. Yeah. That could be a place to, to sort of further share information but i i got 10 minutes of his time and tried to explain everything yeah no problem okay Great. okay thank so you so i have some notes i may have to touch base with chris make sure i didn't forget anything but thank you everybody for yeah. coming i really appreciate it thank you all yeah it's awesome great to see everybody so I'll make Take thank care. you see you soon i'll make all a right, bye to adjourn if you unless you have anything else carolyn no, no, I'm fine. Thank you, Trevor. And um, Lisa, thank you so much. Yep. My Chris, pleasure. Chris, okay. thank you for being here too. All those in favor. I, I Carolyn. Trevor Thank you all.